Hello and welcome back to the tutorial. In this video I want to talk a little bit about nonlinearities in linear regression. In the examples we've seen so far, the relationship between the dependent and independent variables has always been linear in a sense that an increase in the uh, independent variable on average always uh, yielded an uh, the same amount of increase in the dependent variable. If you think of the uh, advertising and sales data set that we have seen across the advertising, uh, advertisement spending uh, from zero to one, the increase on average in sales was the same as from 1,000 to 1,001. Sometimes, however, this a linear relationship across the entire distribution of the independent variable does not hold. And uh, I want to talk about one of these uh, examples in this video. Uh, again, I have a sales and advertising data set. However, if we look at the relationship between the two variables, we can see that the linear fit uh, between the two is not quite perfect. We can see in the beginning all the points are actually below our fitted line and, and then there's kind of a bend in, in the data. So this is uh, of course not ideal for OLS since uh, especially in this area our predictions are going to be quite far away from the actual observations, which is of course not what we want. Uh, we can still run or less, and since the line you know, on average fits pretty good, uh, we will still get significant uh, coefficients and this is all fine. However, as we see from the visual example, this is not what we want in this case. What we can do is try to transform the variables so they, uh, the relationship between them will be linear after the transformation. And one of these transformations that we can do is taking the log. Recall that we can interpret log differences as percentage changes. So if we take the log of the dependent variable but not of the independent variable we're saying that we have a unit change in the independent variable so for example an additional euro spent on advertising and this will cause a percentage change in sales so if we run this regression again we get a uh, quite a different uh, coefficient here that is due to the fact that we are now not uh, predicting a unit change in sales but a percentage change in sales and uh, we can again visualize this relationship and find that possibly this is a little bit better but still here in the beginning this is not quite what we want at the end it looks actually uh, after a couple of thousand uh, euros of advertisement spending it actually the linear fit looks pretty good but uh, still in the beginning this is not quite right so in another step we will also take the log of the advertising spending as well as the log of the sales notice that now the interpretation of this model is a percentage change in advertisement causes a percentage change in sales. So in this case, and if we increase advertising by 1%, notice that this is not the same euro amount across the distribution of advertisement spending, but really an increase as a percentage of the current uh, imagined advertising spending will cause a 0.3 percent 
increase in sales, which again is not the same number across the distribution of sales, but always a percentage increase at a given level. And therefore, since we now have this percentage increase, the relationship between sales and advertising doesn't have to be linear, um, but the log relationship, the log-log relationship of the two might be. So if we visualize this model, we see that this is quite a nice linear fit where our line is across the entire distribution of log advertisement and log sales uh, is kind of straight through the points here so that we can think that the linear relationship of the logs uh, does hold quite well and this would be the model we would use. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.